A few days ago, for nearly half the world, the skies were aglow with bright colors. It was spectacular. Due to a strong burst of solar activity, a geomagnetic storm is underway and the solar wind particles, these particles streaming from the sun, have been interacting with the Earth's atmosphere, producing dancing lights of different colors as they hit molecules of different gases. After multiple days of intense solar activity and once-in-a-lifetime auroray sightings at lower latitudes, including faintly in India, in Ladakh, more details are now being made available about the very strong coronal mass ejection from the sun that led to this intense geomagnetic storm. In this video, we're going to focus on findings and data specifically from ISRO. On Tuesday, ISRO published data and readings on the geomagnetic storm as observed by the space agency from the ground, from space and from the lunar orbit. The technical findings detail out the kind of flares that were emitted from the sun, the energy and flux they carried and how the observations varied between Earth and space. This is quite interesting and also important. First, it helps us understand what is happening to the atmosphere and how these solar activity effects affect life on Earth. And secondly, with this particular report and these findings, it's quite interesting for us as people interested in the Indian space program to understand how the science on these instruments in different missions have been working and what kind of findings they made. Observations in the form of spectral signatures across the electromagnetic spectrum have been posted from Aditya L1, the solar observation mission that is located between the Earth and Sun in space, and Chandrayaan-2, which is currently in orbit around the Moon. According to ISRO, it has stated that it has mobilized all its observation platforms and systems to record data and electromagnetic signatures of this particular solar event. This geomagnetic storm was quite severe and intense. It reached really high values of intensity and it has been the strongest geomagnetic storm since 2003. This fact is highlighted in ISRO's findings and of course other scientists also concur. But we haven't yet seen reports of any serious consequences in terms of adverse effects to satellites or space missions because of this solar event yet. Before we look at ISRO's data that has been published, let's first understand what geomagnetic storms are and what a coronal mass ejection is. The sun makes up 99.8% of the entire mass of the solar system. That is a lot of material. Under that intense mass, there is intense pressure inside the sun. Such heat and pressure affect regular atoms, displacing electrons inside atoms and producing charged particles through various mechanisms, including the movement of highly energetic particles that knock out electrons from within atoms. This results in magnetic field structures and lines on the sun. Once in a while, these magnetic connections stress and break and then reconnect in the form of giant loops of material over the surface of the sun. Such events can trigger a coronal mass ejection, which is a large expulsion of material from the sun along these magnetic lines outward into the solar system. The material, of course, consists of charged particles, but the source of the material is typically regions on the sun that hold colder planet-sized spots called sunspots. These cooler parts of the sun often lead to comparatively cold and therefore dense material being trapped by the magnetic flux, preventing the usual flow of hot material in the sun. When this flux reconnects, the dense filament of colder material is either reabsorbed by the sun or ejected away from the sun, traveling faster than the regular stream of charged particles that make up the solar wind. And this coronal mass ejection also moves along with a shock wave. This material from the sun interacts with our atmosphere, specifically our ionosphere. When these charged particles hit different gases, it produces the northern and southern lights high up above the ground. Due to the magnetic field lines of the Earth that protect our atmosphere, 
These interactions of charged particles with our atmosphere occur closer to the poles, typically. It is during very rare occasions that these northern lights and southern lights reach lower latitudes. Such interactions of solar material from the sun with our atmosphere are called geomagnetic storms and they are a part of space weather. These storms not only cause aurorae when they hit different gases, but they also have the potential to knock out satellite communications and and affect electronic infrastructure on the ground depending on how intense they are. Milder versions of these storms come from solar flares which are not powerful enough to release mass so they are not coronal mass ejections and therefore they do not cause strong geomagnetic effects on earth. However this one was a coronal mass ejection. All solar flares and coronal mass ejections release radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum in just a few minutes. Geomagnetic storm intensities are measured in an index known as the Geomagnetic Storm Index or KP. The maximum value is 9 for the strongest class of solar flares called X-class. Other classes include M and then C and then B and then A which is the mildest. The active region or the sunspot region from where this coronal mass ejection occurred is called AR13664. That's the official name. And instruments noted that there were a series of strong X-class flares released towards Earth. But what more did they note? So let's look at what ISRO observed from Earth. The coronal mass ejection event occurred on 10 to 11th May and the particles reached Indian atmosphere in the early hours of 11th May. Ionosphere changes its density and energy throughout the day as sunlight increases and decreases. It is not considered to be fully formed in the morning and satellite observations from the National Atmospheric Research Laboratory or NARL in Andhra Pradesh showed a decrease of electron content by over half overnight on the 10th. But subsequently the next morning the electron content of the ionosphere above India went up by 10% with large variations indicating that this layer in this region was currently being disturbed. By the evening the electron content had risen by upwards of 30%. The total electron content of the ionosphere is significant as the presence of electrons and plasma or superheated ionized gas directly affect the propagation of radio waves, which in turn affects both satellites as well as GPS systems. The Tumba station, which monitors space weather, has specialized instruments to precisely study space weather. Therefore, the readings here were much more sensitive. It showed an increase of TEC, the total electron count in the atmosphere above Tumba at over 100%. Then there are observations from the lunar orbit. Chandrayaan-2 is currently in a polar orbit around the moon and it is equipped with instruments that measure space weather due to its operational environment. It needs to know the data. The XSM instrument on board the space mission mainly monitors solar X-rays and high energy particles that come near the moon. The agency needed to activate a filter and bring this filter in front of the X-ray detector of this instrument to prevent saturation of readings. ISRO states that the instrument observed many interesting phenomena in this geomagnetic storm. The readings show numerous spikes in the amount of charged particles and charged particle concentration around the moon over the last five days. It also shows that high energy particles at the lunar orbit rose steadily with a steep spike on 9th to 10th May. Observations were also made by the Aditya L1 mission because, of course, it is India's first mission to understand the sun. It orbits an empty point at a region called L1 which lies between the Earth and Sun and moves along with the Earth as it orbits. The spacecraft hosts a number of specialized instruments that have been built to study the Sun and so we do have data. The solar wind ion spectrometer and the suprathermal and energetic particle spectrometer, these two instruments have made detailed observations about solar wind, temperature, plasma and ion flux in this event. The SWIS instrument's readings showed an increase of alpha particles and proton flux in the solar wind signature. Alpha particles are those that are made up of two protons and two neutrons that are bound together, similar to helium-4. 
These are ions or positively charged particles because they are missing two electrons, so they are not electrically neutral. When these alpha particles interact with electrons in our atmosphere, they become electrically neutral and become a double helium atom. But because they are highly energetic, they travel at fast speeds and interact with the atmospheric molecules, knocking off electrons from atoms and further charging the atmosphere. Proton flux measures the amount of positively charged particles or protons entering the atmosphere. These are also high energy particles that are emitted from the sun and can charge the atmosphere, which in turn interferes with radio and satellite communication. Aditya's observations also indicate a steady increase over the day in the rise of energetic ions and particles in the atmosphere. X-ray instruments on board the Aditya mission observed multiple X and M class flares over the last few days. The magnetometer instrument also made these observations. And during all of this time, the health and physical well-being of satellites and instruments also need to be monitored because there is exposure to radiation and excess charge. Geomagnetic storms of greater strengths are of particular danger to spacecraft and satellites that are above the Earth's atmosphere as they can be affected by the stream of charged particles from the Sun. This, of course, includes space missions that are orbiting the Earth, Sun and the Moon in different layers of the atmosphere as well. For ISRO, the master control facility in Karnataka tracks all flight readings and health of different spacecraft. Due to the waves of charged particles, some spacecraft observed slight changes in their momentum. So what happens is a large amount of energy and heat is transferred by the solar particles into the atmosphere. When this happens, we know that heat rises up, so hot molecules of air rise up. As the upper atmosphere heats, it also expands, including expanding downward. This then increases the density of the atmosphere where satellites orbit, leading to more drag and loss of altitude. Some low Earth satellites indeed displayed signs of orbital decay, up to five or six times more when compared to what is normal. But these were not substantial enough to require concern. Apart from this, ISRO states that no major anomalies have been observed in any of the 30 high altitude satellites and spacecraft that the agency monitors, including all of the NAVIC satellites. Those were the simple readings that gave us an insight into how all of these instruments work and what kind of data they produce during these anomalous events. And this year is going to be interesting. The solar activity from this active region is ongoing along with more weaker solar flares. Astronomers now are continuing to monitor the space weather because this year is going to be rough as well as next year because the sun reaches its peak activity of its 11-year cycle in the later part of this year. <laughs>